And welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club for the month of July. Um, we got a great book this month, uh, a book that you will like a lot. Um, uh, the book is Primer, uh, and it is written by Jennifer Mur Murrow and Thomas Kroyofsky uh, with art by Gretel Lutsky. We are very lucky to have Thomas here today. Thomas, hello. Hey, how you how doing? How you doing, man? Hey, welcome. man, I'm doing great. Uh, sorry Jennifer couldn't join. She's out getting material for the next book. She's crime fighting or something like that. Nice. I don't know. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> but uh, nice, thanks nice. for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, this was a fun book. Uh, really enjoyable. Um, I know a lot of the kids have already expressed to us that they they loved it. Um, so uh, let me start with the first question I always start with. Yeah. Why comics? What is it about comics to you that, uh, that makes it such a great medium? Oh, man. Uh, well, I've been reading, obviously, since I was a kid, since my dad gave us his old comics. Um, I think just the fact that like writing for comics is you can do anything because there's no real budget. You know, I come from the TV world where we have to write animation for Nickelodeon Disney, and you have to sometimes worry about you know what you're creating, like a giant action scene. You know, that can get expensive. But if I write an action scene in this book, it gets done, no matter how many people are in it or you know how many monsters we put in there. There's no real budget, and you can just go wild and. Um, uh, also, just the tangibility of just like holding the comic book, you know, it's one of my favorite things. It's just portable. Uh, you can just do so much. It's just, I don't know, everything about it. I love. Awesome. Is that why? Is that why the book starts with uh, with a giant plane crash <laughs> in the center of the city? Yeah, pretty much. So basically, we, you know, that this is our very first uh, graphic novel comic book, and I just we really wanted to grab the reader right away. Like when you do. Like the first Batman movie back in 1989, you know, it starts off with a mugging and Batman shows up immediately and you're like, okay, I'm invested. I get, I see there's a superhero here. Now I want to see the backstory. So that's why we did, yeah, the plain uh, opening action sequence just to kind of grab you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you said that, uh, that the, your background, both of you, I, I believe, is, is more in uh, writing for cartoons and animation and things like that. Um, how did you get started? Good question. Um, Jennifer and I actually each both separately started at Nickelodeon. She was working in the live action department, uh, I think on the Nick Cannon TV show as like an assistant or something like that. And I started off as an assistant myself on a preschool show called Chalk Zone at Nickelodeon. And uh, that was probably 2003. Um, luckily, my friend got me in there, you know, got my resume to the right people. And that was like a dream come true, getting a job at Nickelodeon, because I love cartoons. I've always loved Nickelodeon. Um, and then from there, you know, just like any job, just worked my way up, met the right people, and became a writer at Nickelodeon on a show called Cat Scratch and Tack and the Power of Juju. And same with Jennifer. Jennifer uh, eventually worked her way up to being a writer. She's written for Star Wars Forces of Destiny. She's written for DC Superhero Girls uh, and DC Lego Superhero Girls. So. She has more superhero experience writing than I do, actually. Um, but yeah, that's that's how we got into it. Um, uh, did you go to school to, for writing um, specifically, or? Yeah, uh, I went to film school. I went to Emerson College in Boston, uh, which is a great school. It was just all about making film and being creative. And I, when I was there, I mainly focused on my screenwriting classes, uh, and that really taught me to. Uh, you know, really create character and drama. And uh, that's why the book itself um, is kind of written like a movie. Uh, it's got all the plot points in there, you know, the twists and turns. But uh, yeah, I specifically went to school for that. Jennifer went to school, she went to USC and she was there to be, I think a composer. She wanted to be a film composer, but she's always been, you know, super creative and so have I. So it just, you know, came together, but yeah. That's a that's an interesting move going from uh, composing to uh, to writing. <laughs> it's all creative, yeah, yeah. No, it is all creative. I just 
I, I, I would, I would think that those would be very different parts of your brain that you would be using. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't have the, I don't have the brain for music at all. She's very musically yeah. inclined. So yeah. uh, I'm more of the physical artist. Like I, I was, I grew up drawing and painting, not very well. Uh, otherwise, I would have drawn the book myself. Luckily, we got a great artist. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, Gretel is really good. Uh, she, uh, uh, we tried to get her to come on today, but but we weren't able to work that out. But uh, she is ridiculous. Like her artwork is just, it's. We're so lucky to have her. It's 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 amazing. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh. How did you and Jennifer start working together? So, um, you know, it's, it's funny we've <laughs> we had all these opportunities over the years to work together, but we just never did. Because for some reason we just we couldn't make it work. Like I think we're both very stubborn in some ways uh, about our ideas. And then one day we were just sitting around uh, two years ago, I guess early 2018, and we were talking about how to create like a new superhero and what that would be. Like how do we create something that's that people, you know, kids and adults will just love. And so we threw out the idea of the superpowered body paints that Primer wears. And then from there, just it just seemed like it made sense for us to work together because we we both just kind of got it. It just clicked. So that's, that's the, this is the very first thing we've ever worked together on after knowing her for 17 years. Uh, so yeah, it just came about organically and easily. Nice. Luckily. Nice. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a fun idea. Uh, uh, what was, what was the genesis of it? I think basically I personally love it when superheroes get new costumes. You know, I think there was this time back in the 90s when Superman, I think he kind of went evil or something, but he got a new costume. It was like nothing like his old costume. It was like this, it was like, I think it was a Krypton, Kryptonian, whatever. But I always loved it when like, you know, a new artist would come in and put their spin on, you know, Batman's costume. So it didn't look the same as it did from the previous book that the, the different artists did. So the idea of Primer was like, okay, what if we had a superhero who never looked the same? She always went out in a, in a new costume, you know, um, something that you're kind of excited to see every time you open the book because you know Primer will not have that same look. She'll have a different paint design on, a different wig. Um, and I think that's what it mainly came from. And personally, from my artist background, I just love bright colors. Like I don't wear bright colors. I wear just gray and black. But I love looking at bright colors. And back in my art classes in high school, I would just use a ton of bright colors uh, on everything. And I always made it look terrible because I'm not that good of an artist. But I just love looking at the bright colors. So mainly it just became, it just came from that idea of a superhero who just never looks the same twice, just just for the fun of it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a really, uh, that's a neat idea. Um, how did, how did you make the leap from the idea to to it being a book, right? Um, uh, I, I asked this in particular because, you know, when we look at most of the stuff that DC is doing in this, this is a new line of books from DC. Um, they're almost all of them are Superman, Batman, or Wonder Woman books, pretty much, right? Um, yeah. uh, so, so how did you uh, square that circle for us? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it just happened. I honestly don't know, like, exactly. We were very lucky. So, well, you know, luck favors the prepared, right? So Jennifer was good friends, is good friends with one of the editors at DC Comics, Michelle Wells. And um, Michelle had told Jen that, you know, DC was looking to do some new graphic novels um, and they wanted to reach out to people who had written in other mediums. So a lot of those books, as you know, in this line of graphic novels are written actually by like authors who've done young adult novels. And they wanted, you know, the take from animation writers. Like, what would we do if we were to be given a comic book? And they were open to new pitches of new superheroes, which was huge for us. We're like, DC will wants a new superhero from someone outside DC because we were never working for DC before. Um, and so uh, it just happened at the right time. Jennifer had soft pitched the idea of Primer to Michelle, I think it was at like Michelle's part, birthday party or something, I don't remember. And Michelle said, that's a really cool idea. So then we flush it out some more and, you know, it was really just timing, timing and who, who we knew and, and having the right thing at the right time. Um, but that was about two years ago when we first pitched her the idea, yeah. 
Yeah. Did you uh, did you put together uh, a sort of a beat by beat synopsis? Yeah. Of, of this uh, book, yeah. We did. So there there were two different. When we pitched it to to DC, we we wrote up, we wrote up like a two pager, and on that two pager, at the top we actually did this kind of paint design you see here. Mm-hmm. Jennifer and I like took some clip art from online and put that at the top of the document just to kind of like grab your attention. Uh, and so we we beat out a few different stories, and the first one I think had Primer fighting uh, Deathstroke. So it was Deathstroke, uh, you know, from the Teen Titans who wanted to get these paints, and uh, and then in the end, Primer was going to save the Teen Titans and then join the Teen Titans. And we did another one because DC was like, no, let's not do that. They wanted to explore different things. So we did a different one where she fights Lobo and beats up Lobo by the end. And then eventually DC was just like, they made it more simple for us. And they said that, hey guys, let's just focus on Primer. Uh, she really is kind of like a, you know, such a fun and engaging character that they didn't want, I think, their stable of, you know, DC legends to kind of cloud her. So. So eventually, yeah, we just we beat out the story a few different times, and until we got the one that you know DC really liked. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so they so they accepted the 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 idea for the book without a specific, like they accepted yes. the idea of the book is is what I'm yeah. hearing there. Yeah, pretty much. So like in that original, the very very first two page document we gave them was I think the Deathstroke and Teen Titans idea, okay. and. Um, I think what they really gravitated to was the idea of clearly, you know, Primer and her powers and her backstory of being a foster kid with, um, uh, you know, a dad in jail. So I think they they really like that kind of aspect of it, but mainly I think just the visuals of the superhero with the paints. That's my guess. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, it, it, I, I was trying to see, I guess, sort of the distinction between accepting an idea and accepting a pitch. Right, because because those are two different things, right? Like, I, I can conceptually see someone coming up with a good idea, but not ever making the pitch work. You yeah. know, <laughs> luckily, yeah, you know, luckily we've been writing for years and years, and we had all the right resources to kind of make this. Uh, you know, D- DC had trusted us. You know, they knew we had a cool concept, and we had the track record of writing. Um, you know, for many successful properties, so I think they just. They knew that we could turn that pitch, no matter how rough it was, into something, uh, you know, more fleshed out and special. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, uh, all right, so at, at some point, two or three rounds in, I guess, um, you get to the point where, where you found the actual pitch that's going to go across the plate. Uh, what's the next step then? Uh, wow, I, I, we kind of went into that development stage where I think we were continuing to flesh out the story more. We had that original two pager we, you know, we had like 10 different versions of that two pager to get to the one that eventually we were going to flesh out into an outline. And that became, I think maybe like, uh, we went nuts with it. I can't remember how long the outline was, but, uh, maybe 20 pages. I can't remember. And our editor, Jim Chadwick at D- D- was helping us with that. And he was kind of helping us, you know, pushing us in like the direction that would, this is our very first comic book. So he's trying to help us make sure it was more comic book. Oh, sorry, not comic book, graphic novel, uh, as opposed to what we've been doing in animation. Cause he was wanting to make sure the medium was right for the story. Or the story was right for the medium. But we, yeah, we worked on that outline a few different times, um, but the story was pretty solid from the two pager that we eventually settled on. So, um, from there, just went to script, and while we're doing that, DC reached out to us with some artists to, to look at, and they gave us a few, and then uh, we got Gretel, which was, you know, amazing, and then from there we started doing designs and talking about costumes and all sorts of stuff. So, so yeah, it just went from like it's like we do in TV, you know, you have your premise pitch, and then you move to outline, and then to script, and the script is 134 pages. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was probably really a long answer. <laughs> no, long no, no, no. That's long answers are good because because 
because we have an hour to fill, so long uh, answers yeah. are always good. Right. Um, I can go on we'll, and on. Uh, yeah, and we'll be taking some questions fairly soon. Um, let me just, I want to keep going on this, just just a, a, just pick at these threads a little bit more, um, particularly the question of the difference between writing for animation, right, and writing for comics. Now, clearly, in in a in a live show or an animated show, time passes in a linear fashion, right? Like right. the audience can't stop and go back and see, but in <laughs> comics, it's really traditional for, for you to, you know, to jump around in the book as you're reading it and, and, and the, the reader controls the pace, right? Yeah. Rather than the script. So can you talk perhaps a little bit about the challenge of, of making that adjustment in your head? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. You're right. Like when we're doing our animation, normally we write for 11 minute animated cartoons or 22 minute cartoons. So you have to have everything just fit in. And actually, I think under the restrictions writing for animation, if you're writing for an 11 minute cartoon and you have all these ideas, you want to try to figure out a way to fit all those ideas into an 11 minute cartoon. So for this, that, that was kind of like really good training before we wrote this graphic novel because there were so many ideas that we wanted to put in here. Um, and, and I gotta say, it was actually kind of an easy transition to go from writing animation to writing this graphic novel because they're both really visual mediums. Um, the only real difference I think we had was, or the challenge was, yeah, trying to fit things on the page so that the pacing would work. Um, uh, I think, uh, let's see, what was I gonna say? Um, like there's, there's rules in graphic novels where, you know, when you turn the page, you want that to be the splash page of like the, the superhero reveal. And there were times of where we were trying to figure out, okay, how do we paste the story? So when you turn the page, you have that reveal of the superhero. And I think we broke that rule a few times and we actually have this superhero reveal on a few different pages. It's not supposed to be on, but, uh, you know, it, I just got to say, it, was, it wasn't too hard to transition. I mean, we just basically had to do a lot more directing in this script because we're telling Gretel, our artist, hey, okay, this is what we want. In an animation, if I say, okay, yeah, you know, Batman punches the Joker, you kind of let the artist who's drawing that sure. do what they want to do. Here, we have to tell Gretel, you know, we want it at this angle, you know, we want the fist extended, we want the guy falling back. So it was basically just us directing more. But, uh, you yeah. know. It was fun, easy. Did you uh, did you do your own uh, thumbnails or storyboards for yourself? Uh, no, but I did do. Uh, I did help design the costume that she eventually has because when I was a kid, I wanted to be a comic book artist, mm -hmm. and so I always draw people in costumes and stuff. So I did help do that, uh, but other than that, I didn't do any thumbnails. I did do a thumbnail for the cover page at one point. Uh, where Primer's in an action pose, doing some cool robot fighting thing, and DC really wanted to have, you know, this cover, which was the right choice, because people really react to this cover, and, it, you know. But other than that, no, I did not do any thumbnails. I think Gre Gretel had just, like, these, she has these amazing instincts, and she can interpret what we say, like, perfectly, and then she, like, adds to it. So didn't need to give her anything, you know, crazy detailed. Sure. It was, I was actually thinking more about, uh, like in terms of for yourself, like how things flow on the page. Can oh. we fit all of these things on the page? You know what I mean? Like uh, particularly yeah. beginning comic writers, uh, often will go, you know, oh yeah, there's, there's the cavalry's coming over the hill and then the cop cars are pulling up front. <laughs> right. Like, and, but then you can't draw that. Right. You know, that would have been smart for me to, for us to do, but I didn't even think of doing that. No, we were just, I mean, I would just look at like, okay, we can only put four panels on this page, and I would just do it. We would just do it in our heads, just talk about it. Okay. Uh, but that would have probably helped us a lot. Yeah. Next time. Yeah, next time. Um, uh, we do have a question, Jordan. Yeah. And anybody who has a question, please feel free to uh, to put it into uh, the the question line here, and we'll we'll get to your questions. Hi, I love the book. I thought it was very cinematic. Are there any plans for a show or a movie version already? Uh, that would be nice. Come on. Hey, let's, let's you know, hey, uh, I'll ask DC right now. Uh, you know, I think that's always kind of like in the cards. We would obviously love that. Uh, the book just came out, like, I believe a month ago. So according to DC, 
it usually takes a few months of sales for the, them to kind of get a good idea on like what book is doing well. So in a few months, maybe we'll know a little more, but um, yeah, anything's possible. I think one reason DC wanted this book from us is because Jennifer and I, who coming from animation backgrounds, if this were to become a animated series, we already know everything about animation. It would make it easier to turn that into a show. Sure. Um, but yeah, hey man, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. TV show, yeah. movie? Yeah. yeah. Let me let me ask the natural follow up to that. Um, uh, do you have uh, uh, ideas or thoughts for a second volume of the book? No, but I have thoughts and ideas for the next four books. Okay. Four. So okay. yes, uh, we have Jennifer and I have hashed out a bunch of new um, storylines to kind of make it like a big five book arc. So if uh -huh. this first book does well. We have everything pretty much thought out for the next four, but then again, that's up to DC and hopefully uh, the fans who ask for it. But we we have some pretty wild and cool stuff that we want to uh, share eventually. Um, okay. But yes, yeah. Okay, and um, uh, would those stories uh, be more like include more DC universe elements? You know, right now the way we've written them is that they do not. Um, nice. We kind of liked the idea that Primer would stand out on her own, um, just based on what DC wanted for this first book. But uh, we would love for her to interact with DC characters. Um, if if DC asked us to put Harley Quinn in here, Jen would flip out because she loves Harley Quinn. She loves Wonder Woman. So do I. Uh, but Wonder Woman was like her hero growing up. So if they if they wanted us to, we would love to do it. But as of now, we just have Primer stories and other new original um, heroes and villains that we've created to put into these future books. But nice. we're open to it. Very, very fun. Very fun. That's good to hear. Um, is that questions? You got, you got, he got more. He's got more questions. Sweet. I also have some in email, which I'll ask in a minute. Right. <clears throat> Here it comes. Uh, does Ashley have a birth mom? And if so, what happened to her? That's well, a very a birth mom. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is something that Jennifer and I have discussed uh, at length, and that is something we really want to share. And thank you for that question because I would love to be able to tell you what we have in mind uh, in terms of revealing uh, her birth mother and her history and how that affects Primer and Ashley or Primer slash Ashley. So uh, all I can say is, if we get more books, you will find out. And yeah. She does have a birth mother, though. I just can't say anything about it now. Right, right. Very, very, very good. Very good. That's the right way to do it. Uh, I, I'll follow up with 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 the father uh, in prison because you never say his name at any point that I see. I could be wrong <laughs> about that, but I don't think his name's even mentioned anywhere. Um, his and name is certainly, Frank. you know, he's he's even got the little prisoner tag, and it doesn't say anything on it. Um, uh, I'm wondering just personally, there's probably zero chance that he's Roy G. Biv, uh, the Rainbow Raider. That's a, that's a, that would be a really cool kind of Easter egg if that were true. You know what? Maybe he is now that you suggested it. <laughs> that would be cool. I think someone else had asked if Primer was uh, related to a, a different DC villain. I think her name was Tagger or something like that, or I forget, because she was also a spray painter. Hmm. But no, at right now, Ashley's dad is, um, his name is Frank, and Frank Rayburn, and we have some cool stuff for him in the future, too, but okay. not, not, a, not a currently existing DC character, no. Yeah, 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 okay, very good, very good. You have another one, uh, George? Oh, that was a two questions, all right, well, I'll answer the ones from my phone, then. Um, one, I, th I think, is, is from your brother, perhaps, Stephen? Uh, Probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about Primer. Uh, how did you find the artist to work with? Her, her I thought her stuff was perfect for the character, very energetic and vibrant. Did you have to review a bunch of artists or what? See, this is how much I don't talk to my brother. He has to get to me by sending questions to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have been that first question from Steve K there, too. Uh, probably. He's, he supports me. He's, he's the, he bought, like, uh, I don't know, 2,000 copies of the book. No, I don't know how many copies bought it. Um, so yeah, DC came to us with a few different artists and uh, they said that Gretel really, really gravitated towards the character because 
I mean, obviously any artist that DC works with is going to be great, but Gretel really wanted to do it. And we're like, uh, yeah, you can absolutely do this because her stuff, I, I cannot wait to show you guys the stuff that she's done for this. Um, uh, we have a, lot, a, a few different superhero costume concepts that she designed that are amazing. Um, but yeah, DC brought her to us and we we're so lucky that they did, but they never forced her on us. They said, hey, do you like this, this artist? And we're like, yeah, we love her. Um, and you know, she was instrumental in making this book pop. You know, you, it's, it's, we got very lucky with having her as, as our very first graphic novel artist. Yeah. So, so let me let me ask about when they when they're showing you artists. Are they having artists do a depiction of this character, or are you just looking at a portfolio of other art that they've done? I think at first they'd given us uh, the portfolios. I think they sent us links to portfolios, mm -hmm. um, but I think they only gave us like two or three artists in the first place because they DC, you know, clearly they know what they're doing and they found they narrowed it down to the perfect artists that they know would be great for this book. Um, so I think, I, I can't remember, I'll have to look in my files, but we might have some artwork from some of the other artists who are up for this job too. But um, I think Gretel had done some specific pieces to for the book to get the job. I believe she did like a, a three page storyboard or, or you know, rough board of an action scene of Primer fighting some bad guys. So mm -hmm. I think when we saw that, we're like, oh yeah, she she gets it. She she knows pacing. She she knew how to frame everything. Um, but yeah, did that answer the question? I forget what the question was. Yeah, no, I think I think that <laughs> answered the question all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you you wrote full script for this when you when you did the script. A full script. Like, yeah, like in well, so so in comics traditionally you can either. You know, go page one, panel one. Here's what happens. Dialogue, just basically like a like a yeah. film script. Um, or you can sort of synopsis on this page. These things happen, and then you kind of go and you dialogue later. That's called Marvel style, just so you know. Oh, yeah. No, we did it. We did it the the, the first way you mentioned it. Okay. So it was panel one, and then we had yeah. the, the description of the action, and we would get as detailed as we wanted to. Sometimes we would just be like, you know very vague because once we started seeing that Gretel completely understood what we're doing, we gave her a lot more freedom and trusted her. Uh, but yeah, we did it with the, you know, panel one action and then the dialogue. And, you know, we, one thing that to your question earlier about what the difference is for writing animation and then graphic novels, one of the challenges was that they told us we could only have maybe three dialogue balloons per panel and then a certain number of, words per balloon so we did kind of have to figure out yeah how to how to get what we wanted to say in those balloons per page while the action is happening uh but yeah sorry no 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 not sorry that's 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 a good note um uh, i don't know that uh I, I suspect that's probably because this is for the for the younger readers and it's the launch of a new line in a smaller format because i don't think that's really traditional for editors to um to sort of put out word and balloon limits uh, <laughs> ahead of time, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right because it is a smaller book, sized yeah, yeah. book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have another question. Jordan tells me, "Can you tell us anything about the art process?" I, I wish Gretel were here; she could tell you all about it. Uh, the art process was it, it was very. Um, they involved us a lot, which was great. You know, they they ran everything by us. They wanted our input on everything. So originally, when we got Gretel, DC had us kind of write up, you know, physical bios of what the characters would look like, and then we just pass it off to Gretel, and she would do a few different takes, you know, rough takes, some really well flushed out, colorful, beautiful takes, and then we would just give our notes on those, and until we kind of like refined it, a lot of those characters in the book, we would just give like rough descriptions, and then Gretel just knocked it out of the park and they're pretty much exactly as they are from when she first drew them in the test artwork, you know, two years ago. Um, but really it was just a lot of back and forth with notes. And I, the, the thing that we mainly were concerned with was obviously Ashley herself and how we wanted her to be depicted. Um, and then her costume in the end. So we spent most of the time when it came to notes talking about 
the costume and then Ashley and Primer herself. A lot of the time it was just incredible. Like the, the scenes with the night nights or the scenes with the robotic soldiers, all I, I we wrote was like, okay, so these are the bad guys, robotic soldiers and the bad guys wearing a, a, a suit of armor. And so Gretel just did those on her own. We had like no notes, you know, she just knew what she, we needed and it was there. So she made it easy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, the other question. Uh, Ashley doesn't have hi, a mom. typical. <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> Love it. Love it, mom. That's that's the best. <laughs> really, that's like the best moment of like 200 hours of interviewing cartoonists. Hi, mom. You, you know you have at least two viewers right now, my brother and my mom. So there you go. <laughs> so, so mom asks, Ashley doesn't have a typical superhero body. Did you do that for a reason? Yeah, actually, that, that's... I, Wish I could say I gave my mom that question to ask me, but no, she, that's that's very. We were very concerned with like not having a girl with a typical superhero body, because it's just you've seen it so many times, and we kind of like the idea of just being more inclusive and just showing more realistically figured characters in this world. So it was a conscious decision to make Ashley not so svelte, and. Um, I think we ran that idea by Gretel, but she'd also, I believe, given us designs on her own where Primer was not this, you know, very skinny, voluptuous girl. And yeah, but that, that was very conscious. And we love how a lot of fans do react to that. They say that, um, you know, they like that she's not typical and they resemble her or, you know, the, the, the reader feels resembled. You know what I mean? But yeah, thanks, Mom. Yeah, no, I like that. <laughs> Send money. Very good. Next one. I love the story and the art. Are the colors digital? And was there an inker or just pencils to digital? Oh man, that's that's a good question. That's a that's a Gretel question. I wish I knew because uh, the Gretel is based out of uh, I think she's in South America. I want to say. Yeah, uh, she's sorry, in Brazil. She's in Brazil, oh. and. I, we, we only really talked to her through emails and it was through DC. So we never really talked to her directly. There was no need to because she had what she had to do and, and just went wild with it. But honestly, I do not know. I assume it's all digital because when I see Gretel's art online and her live videos, she's drawing on, I think, her, with her stylus pen on, a, on a, some kind of pad. It runs on electricity. Yeah, no, looking, looking, at, looking at it, it seems pretty clear to me that yeah. it's it's all digital and it's and it's probably it probably doesn't go th it's probably not going through separate pencil and ink stages just yeah. looking at it and she did all of that so it wasn't yeah. like she passed off anything to anybody else it was just she yeah. inked it colored it um i just downloaded the version for kindle this weekend just to watch it on a screen mm -hmm. and just it it's just so bright and colorful on like a, a phone screen. I mean, you think it's bright and colorful in the book, you know, wait till you see it digitally. It's so beautiful. But she, yeah. she's an amazing artist. On the other hand, books are better. So let's, let's <laughs> I, just, let's just stipulate that. that. <laughs> books are better. I, books, yeah. Books are better. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I actually, I really wish she was here because I would love to talk to her about palette choices and things like that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, she did just really an exceptional job, uh, given the, the 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 nature of a color-based yeah. superhero. Um, yeah. uh, it, it's written in chapters. Mm -hmm. um, there are four chapters in the book. Um, was were was it conceived of? that way I, oh, I there was a moment that i thought maybe it had maybe been considered for serialization which is why you had chopped it up you know actually it's jim chadwick came to us after we had already done i think the entire book uh the the script and the artwork and he suggested we break it up into chapters mm. um and he found the places in the book where we could put in those new chapter pages title pages um, but I mean, we wrote it very movie-like. It's got so many movie qualities. So it kind of does have those acts naturally, those act sure. breaks naturally, which I think is what Jim found. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, that was not something planned from the start. Okay. Yep. Very good. Um, 
Uh, I have an email question here from Amanda Rainey. Amanda says, thank you for this excellent work. The theme of using creativity to promote personal growth aligns very closely with many experts' views of youth development. What are your oh. hopes for how Primer might empower the use of creativity for preteens and teens? Wow. That's, that's a very sophisticated <laughs> question. That is an awesome question. Um, th you know, I think one reason like Jennifer and I are writers and work in this business is because when you have that creative outlet, yeah, you kind of, you, you just figure out some things, I guess. I, it, in terms of how Primer and Ashley could, uh, you know, inspire other artists, that would be awesome. I think a lot of people, like myself especially, like being a younger kid and not feeling like understood or feeling accepted, I would just draw all day, you know, and it kind of just helped. It was cathartic, and I liked having something at the end of the day that I could say, "Oh, I did this," and it kind of makes you feel, you know, special. Um, but to the, her question. You know, there's, I guess there's a lot of like psychological ways to talk about that. And I wish I was prepared to, you're, you know, had the, the, the uh, intelligence to talk about it. But yeah, does that answer the question? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, one thing I would say is, is I think, I think one of the things, um, uh, I just lost signal, by the way. Okay. As long as I'm still on. One of the things that I thought was, um, was, very interesting about the character is how, and and you will forgive me for this, but how uh, the character is in many ways kind of a blank slate. Um, uh, if if you're a kid and you want to draw uh, Ashley Primer, um, you can kind of draw anything you want to, and it and it would still work. And and that to me is kind of the mark of of a successful and a creative character, right? That it can be interpreted. Oh yeah. Does that make any yeah. sense? I think so. I mean, but you make a good point. It's like, you you know, the thing about Ashley being an artist is it is her way to express herself because she's, uh, you know, she has somewhat of a hard life and she, yeah, expresses herself through creativity. And um, I think, you know, being an artist, you can, whatever you create, no one can tell you that it's wrong. You know, when you're an artist, you can say, I did this, it's, it represents this, or it is just this, and no one can ever tell you you're wrong, right? Like, you, I think as a kid, you grow up being told, you know, you can't do that, you can't do this, you're wrong. But no one can ever take your creativity away from you and, and, and how you believe in your own creativity. So, did I, yeah. does that mean anything? <laughs> no, that, that, absolutely. That's a great answer. There, you know. When we talk about art, there's no such thing as a right answer or a wrong answer. That's that's the beauty of it, right? Right. Um, yeah. uh, I was going to ask a follow up on that that I have now completely blanked on. Um, okay. Uh, Do you want me to spitball? Gosh darn it. Well, I'm going to babble for a minute here. So there's sure. there's 33 uh, powers, uh, 33 colors. 33 is an unusual number. Yeah. Only in that, you know, like you don't, like when you get a box of crayons, they don't sell you 33 crayons, right? It's going to be 32, I think. Uh, yeah, because I think there's like a 64 box, 64 right. color yeah, box yeah. of Crayola crayons. Um, it just had a nice ring to it, you know, and uh, also I did grow up in Boston in the 80s. Um, there was a base, <laughs> baseball, <laughs> that's how much I know sports. Uh, there, there was a... Uh, basketball player with a 33 on his back and that's just that's just like a light reference to that but not really um i okay. think we just liked the number 33 okay okay uh was it difficult to come up with 33 distinct power color <laughs> combinations uh you know i just not really we just basically thought of you know any superhero we've read in the past it's like what powers did they have and what you know? What makes sense to give to someone like Primer? There's still like a lot of superpowers out there that she obviously could not have. Um, you know, like the Green Lantern's ring that's based in his ring, not like in his genetics. Um, but it it wasn't that hard. We just we we've seen like every superhero movie. Jennifer and I have read every comic book, uh, and then the colors. I think I forget how we came up with the color names. I, I think we just I don't know came up looked online or something. Okay, but yeah. 
I, I have to say, some of them are slightly lazy. I don't know. Blue green, lime green, yellow green, yellow orange. <laughs> yeah, I'm a cartoon writer. Lazy. <laughs> yes. I, I make my living writing fart jokes. That's right. what I do. So, right, right, yeah. right. Right. Is, um, it, uh, I mean, so, so since you're writing a lot of cartoons and stuff, obviously you're writing for, you know, a specific demographic in mind. Yeah. Is that, are there, are there any difficulties as an adult doing that? Or, or do you just, do you just sort of take yourself back to yourself being 10 years old? I'm, I'm still 10 years old, man. <laughs> Inside. <laughs> I, I, Jennifer knows this. I don't really take many things seriously. I like to goof off a lot and have a lot of fun. Um, Jennifer does too, but writing cartoons, it just comes naturally to myself and I think to Jennifer, but yeah, I do. I do revert a lot to like my younger self when I think about what I might like to see in a cartoon. Like when I, if I'm running for a superhero action cartoon, like Ninja Turtles, it's like, oh yeah, when I was a kid, I wanted to see the Ninja, Ninja Turtles do this. Um, and in terms of like the book, and uh, I know this says it's, it's like a young adult graphic novel, really, but we kind of wanted to write it specifically for like everybody so it's not it's not really just geared toward a younger audience but like the uh, luckily the adults love it too because um you know we just kind of wanted to create something that was not just like pigeonholed into being i don't know that's just for that's just kids graphic novel we we love that adults really relate to it too and um so we, we kept that in mind when we were writing this one we actually kind of got a little older for this than we did normally for our the cartoons we write which is usually an audience of ages six to eleven okay and and um when you say older, do you mean older, what, like in terms of theme or? Yeah. I like, guess sort of the first thing that flashed into my mind is maybe some of the sequences between Ashley and her birth dad, yeah. you know, are probably a little heavier than you might write otherwise. We would never see that in the stuff that, we, that we've written in the past. Jennifer actually now writes a lot more older stuff than I do for animation. She's writing for these Netflix shows and this other show on Crunchyroll, which are much more adult. Um, but yeah, so like specifically what you're talking about, Ashley's backstory with her dad. Yeah, you'd never see that anywhere in the stuff we've written. And it's kind of refreshing to be able to explore that because as much as we love or I love writing, you know, kid, kids cartoons, it was kind of nice to actually, you know, give a character some more depth with something that's a little edgier. Um, yeah. Sure. Was it was it hard for you at all to uh, not just make? We already talked about the difference between uh, 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 writing for animation and writing for a comic, but the length of the project, right? Yeah. So when you do animation, typically you're talking about eleven or twenty-two minute stories. Um, so eleven to twenty-two pages, I assume, is roughly the size of that. Um, whereas this is is one hundred and forty. That's one hundred thirty. One hundred and fifty pages. Yeah, it's actually without all the other pages in there, it's 134 pages. Okay. So, like, if you're writing an 11 minute cartoon, the scripts are usually like 15 to 18 pages. Okay. Um, and a 22 minute script is like 24 to 30 pages. So, here, um, yeah, it's, the script itself was literally 134 pages, just, just to break it up. I mean, it's not like it, 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 it didn't really require any more writing than you would do for like, uh, a cartoon of the same um, magnitude and story-wise. Like if we were writing this as a as a feature animated, you know, movie, it, the script would have been probably the same length, maybe maybe shorter, depending. Um, yeah, is that right? I yeah. Well, I mean, 134 <laughs> pages would imply a two-hour movie, I think. Yeah. If if I'm yeah. doing the math there, so you know that would be a really long movie. I mean, a two-hour <laughs> A two-hour film is really, really long. Are you saying you don't want to see a two-hour movie of Primer? No, 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 no. That's not what. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just, I'm just it trying to, right. you know, to, you know, to, to make that leap from writing something that is relatively bite-sized, yeah. relatively, yeah. Yeah. Um, to a long story with, mo you know, there's a lot going on in here. There's a lot of yeah. threads. It, I'm just wondering if that was, if that was a challenge at all. Uh, you know. Oh, sorry. Did I answer that too? too aggressively no i it was it was uh it, honestly there really wasn't a challenge I, I think it's just because you know we have that background of writing for a visual medium and 
it didn't take any longer writing this than if I had to write it as an animated show. I mean, um, the pages that you see, if you see the actual script pages, you know, there's a lot of white space on there in yeah. terms of how you, you've seen the comic book scripts, obviously. Sure, of course. Um, but yeah, no, it, there really wasn't a challenge. I mean, okay. I wish I could say it was harder. But yeah, it, no, no. I, yeah. It, just, you know, for, for such a longer story, yeah. that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another question we have. Besides Ashley, which, what is your yeah. favorite character in the comic? I, you know, gosh, man, I, okay, my, I, I do love uh, Luke and Kitsch. So her best friend, Luke, and then her foster father, Kitsch. Because uh, I, I just like the fact that they're not your typical male characters. Like, I grew up with, you know, all the straight white male action hero guys I could relate to, but still not relate to them at all. Because I'm like, I'm actually not like that. I'm probably more chill and I don't say the right thing or do the right thing, I'm probably more into things that are not so masculine you know? And so I, we wanted to create two characters who are more real, which is why I like Kitsch and Luke. They're just like, you know, you, I know these kinds of people. Um, so to me, I think it was kind of important to kind of have characters in there that are not your classical, macho, manly type stuff, which I still love to watch and read about, by the way. But yeah. those are probably my... Also, I love the Night Knights, the, the villains, the, the gang, yeah, my favorite characters, just because they're stupid. Yeah, that was that was that was a good gag too. <laughs> Got another one. I was intrigued by the relationship between Ashley and Luke. Is there potential for Luke to become a sidekick? I, you know, I, that's funny. I got to say, I was thinking about this a few days ago. Uh, good question. Um, personally, I would love to give uh, Luke some powers. I mean, I obviously haven't talked to DC about any of this, and it's. Uh, I've thought about a many, we've thought about many different ways to, to give him some superpowers because I think also it would be super cool to have him there because, because Ashley is so like independent and, and, you know, headstrong and runs into battle. I think like her best friend Luke would, that would not come naturally to him. So it'd be kind of fun to explore. Yeah. If he has powers, Ashley would be like, come on, we gotta go do this. And he's kind of be fun to see him learn. But yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I would love that. Yeah, I'll, I'll editorialize here and just say one of the great things about comics to me, which I think that almost every live action adaptation has ruined over the years, has been the distinction between the superhero characters and then the civilian cast. Uh -huh. I like civilian casts a lot. Um, and I, when I watch a show like I Don't Know The Flash or something, and now every single Everyone. person there is a superhero... <laughs> It's like, yes. who do you relate to anymore? You know. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. You're right. Like, there could be it could be superhero overload. You're right. I mean, you know what? I'll give I'll give Ashley some other you know unsuperpowered friends. Then I'll give Luke powers, maybe. But yeah, right. I was just me editorializing. Sorry. That's a good. That's a very very good point. Though you may, you're right. Like, who's special? If everybody's special, then, then no one's special. special. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do we have another? We have another. Can my daughter help create a 34th <laughs> color in power? That's cute. I like that. Uh, we'll, we'll run that by DC's legal team. And then, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, I'd love a well, new color. You know, back, back, in the, um, uh, back in the 60s, there was a character that DC had called Dial H for Hero. Yeah. yeah. Um, who's, who very explicitly. Um, was a write in with your ideas, and uh, and yeah. and we'll we'll run them in the comic book, which I thought yeah, I was, remember. Was they just brought it back fine. recently yeah. too, didn't they? But that's a yeah, that's a that would be awesome. I'd love to have you know more fan interaction, whatever we can do legally. Yeah. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, we do think about other colors and powers. By the way, we have some more stuff in store. But yeah, I don't know if you know this. Uh, for for our copies, uh, DC made a special coloring sheet, so we have a oh. coloring sheet that all the kids in the club got. Oh, um, cool. So I'm sure they're all doing their own versions right now anyway, so. Oh, awesome. Hey, yeah. I would love to see what they, they come up with. I mean, that's that's the fun of it, is seeing, you know, readers who really love the character and then get inspired to, you know, do their own artwork. That'd be great. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, are we out of questions? We are out of questions. If, well, if you have any more questions while I sort of wrap this up, um, go ahead and, and come up with them. Um, uh, so we, you say that there's going to, you, you hope that there will be eventually up to four more books that yeah. you've got sort of thought out here in some degree or another. Um, uh, do you know how soon we'd be able to see that if that happened? 
Oh man, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to say just based on, it took us two years to do this first book. Mm. And so if, if DC were to ask for another one, I mean, now that we have designs completed, I mean, that takes a lot of time is coming up with the character designs and the artwork. And if we were to get Gretel back, you know, she knows exactly what she's doing. If, if DC were to ask us for another script like next week, I would have them the script. We would have them the script the following week. And then it'd be up to them to kind of like put their machine into motion. So at least a year, probably. That's my guess. Okay, I wanna I wanna push back on this on that one idea though. You would turn a script for another book around in a week. Oh, depending on the, uh, you know, it's uh, clearly depending on like if they approve of the outline. You know, like we, Jennifer and I are very fast writers, and we like everything we write. I guess so we don't really self edit too much. But uh, yeah, if if they if we gave them an outline, or okay, if they greenlit a book, I'd have we'd have the story to them the next day, and then if they greenlit the outline, we'd have that to them. The following week, and if they greenlit the script, we'd have that to them the following week. We just wow, we're just we're, we're, we've been writing for so many years; it just comes naturally. Sure, so, yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, I it, I'm, I'm I wasn't uh, I wasn't talking about that part of it, but more the idea of a of another hundred and you know oh yeah forty page book that you could get it out that fast. That seems that seems <laughs> like that that seems like a very <laughs> quick turnaround to me. Yeah, well, we've been thinking about primer, you know, for the past two years, pretty much all, all the time. And nice. so we, we've, the fun part of it is talking with Jennifer about, you know, just the future stories we could do. So we've had all this time, you know, it, Gretel had had to do all the heavy lifting with the artwork, you know, that yeah. took a lot of time. Uh, so for us, we're just thinking of ideas. It's no time at all. And so, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of time to think about what we would do and how we would tackle that second book uh, and, the, and the subsequent ones if we're lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, I'd love to see more. I, I have to say. Thanks. I mean, I think I think this was a lot of fun. I think it's you know exactly the kind of uh, of you know uh, sort of intro to superheroes kind of book that that is just great for kids and great for the market. So awesome. I Thank loved you. it. If, if for what my vote counts, <laughs> it please do more. Hey man, the fact, thank you, and the fact that you like it, and this is your store, and you asked us to do this, that means a lot to us. So thank you very much for for you know for liking it and asking us to do this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, my absolute pleasure. Pleasure. Is there uh, is there anything else you want to plug? Uh, I mean, let's see. I I mean, I if you see in the back of the book, there's a show that I worked for on Netflix called Buddy Thunderstruck. That's a show that, uh, you know, it's by the Robot Chicken Guys. It skews a little older, but it's still a kid's show. Uh, it's a fun, stupid, silly show about a talking dog who races cars. But uh, other than that, I'm just here to, you know, promote this baby. Nice. I love my primer. So, um, but thank you. Yeah, well, you know, always got to give people the chance to plug the yeah. stuff, you know. That's right. That's how it works. <laughs> um... Well, I want to I want to thank you, Thomas, for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, as I say, I want to thank you for the book. If you will pass our best wishes on to Jennifer as well, um, and and if Gretel, if you're out there reading, you're the thing that made this. No, not the thing that made the book, but kind of you are the color and the art and the fantasticness of this. It's, it's just a great book. So if you're if you're sitting there reading at home, you're like, I'm looking for a book to read. Well. This is a good book. If you're, especially if you're a kid, you're gonna love this. This is this is good stuff. Um, so awesome. I want to thank Thomas. Uh, I want to thank the the them. I want to thank Jordan for running the show. Um, I want to thank the Beat uh, for being our sponsors and allowing a, the the club to grow and give us a wider range. I want to thank all you kids out there uh, and and also a lot of educators and and family members. A lot of Kroyovsky family members out there watching the show today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you all. Um, we will see you next month uh, with another fantastic book. Um, take care. <laughs>